In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Amen. Glory be to God on high, and on earth peace, goodwill toward all mankind. Amen. Let us pray. O God, by the leading of a star, you made known your only begotten Son to the Gentiles. Lead us, who know you now by faith, to enjoy in heaven the fullness of your divine presence. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Old Testament reading for the second Sunday after Christmas is from 1 Kings chapter 3. The king went to Gibeon to sacrifice there, for that was the great high place. Solomon used to offer a thousand burnt offerings on that altar. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, Ask what I shall give you. And Solomon said, You have shown great and steadfast love to your servant David, my father because he walked before you in faithfulness, in righteousness, and in uprightness of heart toward you. And you have kept him for this great and steadfast love, and have given him a son to sit on his throne this day. And now, O Lord my God, you have made your servant king in place of David my father. Although I am but a little child, I do not know how to go out or come in, and your servant is in the midst of your people whom you have chosen." a great people, too many to be numbered or counted for multitude. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding mind to govern your people, that I may discern between good and evil, for who is able to govern this your great people? It pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this, and God said to him, Because you have asked this, and have not asked for yourself long life or riches or the life of your enemies, but have asked for yourself understanding to discern what is right. Behold, I now do according to your word. Behold, I give you a wise and discerning mind, so that none like you has been before you, and none like you shall arise after you. I give you also what you have not asked, both riches and honor, 
so that no king shall compare with you all your days. And if you will walk in my ways, keeping my statutes and my commandments as your father David walked, then I will lengthen your days. And Solomon awoke, and behold, it was a dream. Then he came to Jerusalem and stood before the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord and offered up burnt offerings and peace offerings and made a feast for all his servants. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from Ephesians chapter 1. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. In love, he predestined us for adoption through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace, with which he has blessed us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace, which he lavished upon us in all wisdom and insight, making known to us the mystery of his will according to his purpose, which he set forth in Christ, as the plan for the fullness of time to unite all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In him we have obtained inheritance, having been predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will, so that we who were the first to hope in Christ might be to the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in him, were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it to the praise of his glory. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the second chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. The child, Jesus, grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up according to custom. And when the feast was ended, as they were returning, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem. His parents did not know it, but supposing him to be in the group, they went a day's journey, but then they began to search for him among their relatives and acquaintances. And when they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem, searching for him. After three days, they found him in the temple, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. And when his parents saw him, they were astonished. And his mother said to him, Son, why have you treated us so? Behold, your father and I have been searching for you in great distress. And he said to them, Why were you looking for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? And they did not understand the saying that he spoke to them. And then he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was submissive to them. And his mother treasured up all these things in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and man. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. They presented unto him gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Matthew 2, 11. This is the text. There are gift exchanges, and then there are gift exchanges. This for that of equal order, or this for that of unequal order. One gives chocolate candy, the other gives a diamond ring, or as in the dozen time running football game commercial, one gives a puppy, the other gives a new pickup, or one couple buys each other a new pickup. Oh my! Of the first example, which gift is really the greater? The puppy, of course. The puppy. For the pup is a gift of life and will likely last longer than the $69,000 truck, which depreciates quickly in 84 months of payments when it's maybe paid for and will gain only $1,000 in trade in value with hundreds of thousands of miles upon it. What's wrong with this picture? 
What's wrong with this exchange? Nothing. But it is an illustration of very unequal gifts. Bordering on image making, encouraging covetousness, maybe even greed. Tis far, far from be ye content wherewith thou hast, as San Pablo wrote. And said he, the love of money, and that which it buys, is the root of all evil. 1 Timothy 6.10 expanded a bit. Yes, but, Pastor, fair wages and fair profits do strike for a balance of societal well-being. That's true, and truck salesmen's kids got to eat, too. The wise men, no doubt, at some point had purchased some fine camels. Like having a big Buick trunk or an F-350 pickup bed, their camels could carry loads of things like gold, frankincense, and myrrh. But in reality, they brought gifts of lesser order than the gifts they had received from la mano de Dios, from the hand of God. It was and would be a very unequal gift exchange. First, they got the star, or the astronomical fixture of God's creative hand. First, they got the star and the guidance thereof, God using the human stories of cosmic happenings at the birth of kings to deliver the ultimate and eternal truth and the everlasting word about the everlasting king of kings. The word was made flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. John 1, 14. And in Christ, God was reconciling the world unto himself. 2 Corinthians 5, 19, doing so for peace and eternal good order. Secondly, they got the scriptures. With a prophecy fulfilled and a faithful interpretation thereof, straight from the book of the prophet Micah. But thou, O Bethlehem Ephrathah, Though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall come forth unto me, that is, to be ruler of Israel, whose goings forth have been from of old, from everlasting. Micah 5, 2, King James Version. What a gift! Holy writ! Revealing, there he is, the babe, the ruler, the everlasting king. Thirdly, they got the Savior. Post-star shining, post-scripture understood, they got the Savior. They got the gift of gifts, salvation, for the one in the stone-cold manger, warmed but by the straw, would bear the splintery hardwood cross to be laid in another manger of sorts, a stone-cold tomb, no straw, only to rise, offering forgiveness of sin, life, and yes, eternal salvation to all. Gifts to the wise. One, two, three, the star, the scriptures, the Savior. And all they brought of unequal exchange was gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Gold was a sign of wealth that could be devalued and deflated via shifts in the market. Frankincense goes up in smoke, and myrrh, the lingering scent thereof, fades quickly. But the gift of Christ as the King of kings and Lord of lords lasts forever. He was theirs and yours as you believe and are baptized. Do you so believe? Are you so baptized? Will you bring your gifts of gold? Yes, an offering, but I'm thinking the gold to be likened unto faith, which is but a gift first given by the Spirit through the word and sacraments. No one calls Jesus Lord except by the Holy Spirit, 1 Corinthians 12, 3. 
Will you bring the frankincense of prayers rising into the nostrils of God, whether they be pleasant or painful petitions? He senses, he hears, he answers. Will you bring the myrrh of memory? Remember, there would be no need for myrrh to mask the stench of his death. He rose. He rose, he rose, hallelujah, hallelujah. So go, go, gift givers. Share faith in love and good works for the neighbor. Pray on, pray on without ceasing. Sense the pleasant aroma of hope in Christ forever. Thank God for the star. Thank God for the scriptures. Thank God for for the Savior. What a gift exchange. All of the epiphany gifts reveal much and are many. Give on, pray on, hope on, labor on in Christ. Yes, for the good of others. We are blessed to have words and music from John Henry Hopkins, middle of the 19th century, the tune entitled Kings of Orient. We three kings of Orient are, bearing gifts we traverse afar, field and fountain, moor and mountain, following yonder star. Born a king on Bethlehem's plain, gold I bring to crown him again, king forever, ceasing never over us all to reign. Frankincense to offer have I, incense owns a deity nigh, Prayer and praising, voices raising, worship him, God on high. Myrrh is mine, its bitter perfume breathes a life of gathering gloom. Sorrowing, sighing, bleeding, dying, sealed in the stone-cold tomb. Glorious now, behold him arise, king and God in sacrifice, Alleluia, alleluia, sounds through the earth and skies. Oh, star of wonder, star of light, star with royal beauty bright, westward leading, still proceeding, guide us to thy perfect light. In el nombre del Padre, y del Hijo, y del Espíritu Santo. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
to the celebration of the Feast of the Epiphany of our Lord, it is traditional to announce the church year with these words. Dear brothers and sisters, we have celebrated with great joy the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, by the mercy of God, I am able to announce to you the happiness which will come from the resurrection of our Savior. February 17 will be Ash Wednesday, the beginning of the holy season of Lent. On April 4, we shall celebrate with great joy the holy festival of the resurrection of our Lord. May 23 is the day of Pentecost. November 28 will be the first Sunday of the advent of our Lord Jesus Christ, to whom be honor and glory through all ages of ages. Amen. Let us pray. We thank thee, O God, that thou didst give thy Son, Jesus Christ, to be the light of the world, and that in him thou hast revealed thy glory and the wonder of thy saving love. Help us to love thee who hast loved us so. Strengthen us for the service of thy kingdom and grant that the light of Christ may shine throughout the world, upon all, everywhere, that they may be drawn to him who is the Savior and Lord of all, and the whole earth be filled with thy glory. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who has taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May Almighty God who led the wise men by the shining of a star to find the Christ the light from light, lead you also in your pilgrimage to find the Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen.